What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And did you know wet and wet is all about the timing? So in this rather ugly demo, I'm gonna show you some things to have in mind when doing wet and wet. I know a lot of people have requested this. This isn't my great wet and wet video. I think I'll do a more detailed one, a more organized one. But here, we're just exploring levels of wetness on the paper, in the brush, and on the palette. And that's the key here. You have to remember these three and you have to treat them all with equal respect and, and carefulness. Okay. So this is what the video is going to be about. I'm going to show you how it's done. I'm going to just play around with some water and paint, see what happens. So let's get to it. So let's start exploring uh, wetness and I'm on a kick of doing some more spontaneous videos lately. So uh, hopefully you gain your value from it. What you have to understand is that wet and wet has to do with a lot of different components. The first component is obviously the wet on the paper. So if I put in a bit of a wet area and it's gonna be contaminated because I've been mixing a lot and using this bucket for a lot of different things today. <laughs> and then I go back with some water. You see how the wetness on paper is what disperses the paint. But we have to remember the wetness on paper is not the only factor. Another important factor is the wetness on the brush. It's the wetness on the uh, palette. It's all of these things together. So what I see, for example, very often is, let's say I have a small area to fill in. Okay, I have this small area I wanna fill in. Now, if you've been painting for a while, you probably know intuitively that the wetter the, the, the mix is, the harder it is to control. Okay, so this is super wet now. And, uh, and if I try to fill in this area, and you saw me intuitively going for the, the towel, intuitively, because that's how I always do it. But notice like this, I just touch it and I have a huge droplet. And how am I supposed to fill in this area accurately if I have so much water? Every small press of the brush really expands it, you see? And it's very hard to be accurate. It is possible because I'm experienced, but it is very hard, okay? I clean the, the brush and now I soak back in the extra moist. The wetter it is, it's harder to control. So one trick I can already give you right off the bat is if your brush is very, uh, um, if your brush is very wet, just wipe some of it off and then you can get a light value but have more control. But let's say I wanna mix a dark value. And I know this video is wet and wet, we're gonna get to that in just a moment. But I just wanna show you how important this is. So let's say I wanna mix a dark value to put here, okay? This is a very dark, shadowy shape. I wanna fill it in. So what do most people do? They have this water here, and this is about being aware of what you have on your palette, and they start adding in dark paint to the water, and that'll take ages. Notice how much paint I need to add to overpower all of the wetness here. When will I get a dark value? I don't know, in, in two hours. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously, but look. Look how long I need to do this, and I still am not there. I'm still not there, okay? Instead, what you do is you move into an open space that has nothing in it, no water, okay? At least no water. And you use that. You bring in the very um, thick paint and you do it here, for example, where there's no water at all, okay? You see this area is fairly dry. So I can just bring in the dry paint and put it here instead of battling against this huge pool. Another thing I like to do is, look at this. I'm cleaning the brush. I'm wiping off some of the paint, on, some of the water on it, but it's still moist. I don't know if you can see this with the light. I'm trying to get the angle, uh, but hopefully you can tell it's a bit moist. Here we go. Okay. Now I'm just collecting using this moisture, all of the dried paint. And this is actually going to give me a dark result much faster than if I go to this well. Okay. So this is about being aware of what you have in your palette. Notice all of the dry paint here. I'm just picking it up with a damp brush. And you see how dark that is? And I didn't even have to try, okay? So just being aware of what you have on the palette is huge. Now let's talk about wet and wet. So I'm gonna use this water. And I'm gonna pre-wet an area. I haven't even filled that other shape, okay? So let's pre-wet this. I have a line that's, and you can see this because it's a bit tinted, which is actually good. It works in our favor. I'm gonna thoroughly wet this area, okay? Now here's what's gonna happen. The water will slowly be absorbed and, and, uh, um, and uh, vaporize onto the air. I can lift if I want to with a dry brush, so I'm gonna dry it and then lift. 
okay? But the water is gonna slowly evaporate. So let's make a mark right now. Now let's see what happens. So I made a mark, okay? There is a bit of fading, as you can see, and hopefully I'll zoom in a bit uh, digitally so you can see this. Now let's move on with our lives and do something else. I'm gonna fill in this shape. But what you have to understand is while I do this, the rest of this starts drying off, okay? So what I got here is not what I'll get here in a few moments. This part has less water to begin with. So if I go again, you see how there's a bit less of a spread. I'm gonna hold it up close so you can see. You see how it's more reserved, at least in some parts, because I came with a much uh, more watery mix, but check this out. Here, right at the edge. Do you see how it takes more time to disperse? And here it's like immediate. See, it's a very slight difference, but you can tell probably. The more I allow this to dry, the less of a dispersion I'll get. So let's dry it off by ourselves. I'm gonna wet the brush and clean it up and use it as a sponge. Let's get rid of some of that uh, wetness, okay? I need to uh, dry it a bit more. Come back, and get rid of the wetness. Now let's try injecting some paint onto that. And now you see how it doesn't move as much? Let me show it to you again up close. See how the paint does not move as much? So you have to be aware of that, okay? The more you wait, and if I wait any longer, I'm gonna put it here, it's barely gonna move. And this can be used to your advantage. If you want to have um, very gentle transitions, you wet the area, you put in your one color, you put in your second color, and you get a smooth transition. But if you want to have a little dispersion just to make things a little, uh, like to add details within a shadow, that's something I do a lot. Um, then doing this, waiting for a while, allowing it to dry a bit, and then doing the whole wet and wet saga. And then things will stay in their spot and won't move too much, so you can get a definition, a bit, a bit of a definition, see? An eye, for example, or whatever that may be, nose. Uh, you can get a bit of a definition if you allow it enough time to dry. And this is still pretty wet, okay? Now, a huge mistake people make, and let me show you what it is, this is the main thing that I messed up when I did uh, wet and wet was I pre-wet the, the surface and then I have some, or you know what, even better, I start with a wash, okay, I start with a wash and then I want to do wet and wet, so it's not water technically, it's paint, and now I want to bring back, let's say I want to inject some warmth into it, okay, so what a lot of people do is they mix this up, you see I'm adding water, why am I adding water, this is super watery you can never have more water here than here, okay? That's a, an important key. And when I put the paint, notice what happens. It kind of spreads out the existing paint. It does blend a bit, but you can't see it. And what if I do it here? It's gonna create cauliflowers, okay? Because this is a really watered down version. Notice here how it's gonna move the paint. It's very gentle and it takes time to happen, but because I'm coming in with wetter mixture than on paper, okay? And this is where the wetness of the brush comes into play and of the palette. Because if I want to overpower this wet area, I have to mix here in the palette a darker mixture, okay? And let's say I wanna mix a darker mixture, that's where the brush comes into play. Let's say I dip it in the water and then immediately attempt to mix a very dark mixture. There's no way I'm gonna do that. Look at all the moist in the brush, you see? No way, so you wipe it, you dry it, you pick up whatever paint it is and then you do this. See? And then you have more control, okay? And you have to spend some time doing this and only this, okay? Just doing it, there's an eye, okay? <laughs> I just did a random eye again. Um, that's where you have to spend a lot of time just putting paint, lifting back the paint, putting wet in wet, putting a stronger paint into the very wet paint putting water into an almost dry paint. See how it works on the pigment, how it spreads it out. Putting water on a nearly really dry, like, like let's do it here. And you'll see how it spreads it out, okay? Some pigments are different, are different than others. Some move more, some move less. The whole idea of wet and wet is about timing. Now if I come back with a thick wash like I did earlier, that's not thick, that's wet. And it's still wet actually. It's still really wet, so that's my bad. All of this area is still wet. Hopefully you can see the sheen here. This area is also wet because I have air condition on. It takes longer to dry. But in any case, and I know this video is a little messy, but I did want to show you 
the effect the different levels of wetness have and also to introduce you to the possibility of if it's too wet just lift lift back lift back soak back absorb some of the water and then it's less wet and then you can do your effect a little easier okay so just another thing to have in mind and another note a lot of people are worried about wasting materials notice what I did here I used the paints I had on my palette I barely mixed anything new if I wanted to do another demo I'll use this section see so that's how you save colors and not that I have to worry I have a lot of paints actually but that's how you save up art supplies you don't use new ones all the time you use whatever is on your palette which is why I'm a big proponent of mixing grays with the palette starting a painting with what you have on the palette I find it really fun because you can get very interesting grays and then if you want to tune up one color for example red you just grab a bunch of red and there we go red together with that gray and it works out wonderfully okay um, another thing you want to be aware of by the way is let's say you did a brush stroke a brush mark like this and then you want it to blend into another one so if you come back with say blue you want to make sure you do it in the right timing to have maybe not too much movement maybe just enough movement okay you have to have that in mind the timing and you will learn for your climate for your brand of paints for your brand of paper for your brushes exactly how to handle all of that with time with practice you have to have these sessions of just going wild and trying a lot of things and dripping water and spilling water and all of that okay so i hope this was helpful and with that let's wrap it up so i hope everything is clear and this is the result again not as graceful but you have to spend time doing these kinds of things and with time you'll get it and again this will change based on the weather you're living in the your air condition is on or off the type the brand of paints the brand of paper all of these small little variables that change they're important to learn and you learn it for your own art supplies which is why i say bad or student grade art supplies aren't necessarily that bad you just have to learn how to work with them and you just you may find that you have more to work around okay but other than that they're still they can be great as well so in any case i hope that clears things up let me know if you have any questions below and again i will make a more detailed more um let's say conclusive video on wet and wet we're going to do some more experimentation i feel like this is something i have to build up and figure out how i want to present in the best way possible but i promise to get to it in the future so thank you so much i will see you again in the next one just wanted to remind you i'm coming to new york for the entirety of october so for the on the first up until the at least 20th and then again on the 25th 26th uh, so if you want a lesson with me let me know i'm going to leave contacts down below or anything you'll need and i will talk to you again in another one real soon